Three up, two across, tap that play button three times and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Welcome to Dialogue Alley, a podcast all about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I'm Melanie. And I am Eric. And it's just the two of us tonight for a little um, Thanksgiving little mini episode. We'll we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit. Um, but if you are new to our podcast, I hope you enjoyed this tiny episode. Um Eric and I and our other co-host, Carly, are all Harry Potter book translation collectors, which means we collect Harry Potter books from all over the world in all different languages, and we talk in pretty in-depth about these books in their languages. Um, our episode today, we are going to be doing just that in this tiny episode, having a little... Uh, a little tiny deep dive into one of these books that we love a lot. So that's it. Um, well, we love them all, but we love this one too. We love this one. Yeah, we love this one a lot. Um, just to let you guys know, if you're listening to this episode, this episode is going to come out regular scheduling. Then we're actually going to be releasing an episode next week um, because we're going to kind of flip floppy our weeks a little bit kind of to bounce off of the holiday season um and actually I don't know if I even told you Eric but it kind of works out for me because Hanukkah falls on a day that we would typically like record so um like the first night of Hanukkah so this way we'll be all set for that um yeah we could be accommodating to our own personal lives how about that (laughs) Oh my gosh. Considering Amazing. that we make and set our own schedule, I feel like we are allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, right. I forget sometimes. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, season four, episode seven, our tiny, our teeny tiny little episode. Um, let's do a teeny tiny bit of news. All right. So for the news, we don't have a ton, but I will mention that I was invited to be on the Alohomora podcast as a guest. So Alohomora is another podcast on MuggleNet like us, and they actually are doing in-depth chapter analysis, like book by book, chapter by chapter. So Melanie was on when they revisited... Well, and they're revisiting chapters. They're not going necessarily mm-hmm. in order right now. They're revisiting chapters. So, Melanie, you were on last year, about a year ago this time, and you yep. talked about the Forbidden Forest in uh, the Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone, right? It was Nicholas Flamel. The chapter was oh, Nicholas, Nicholas Flamel. Flamel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which is actually yeah. a teeny tiny chapter in Sorcerer's Stone to go with our teeny tiny theme for today. So, It is. And I also... Uh, was on their show to talk about a teeny tiny chapter in Goblet of Fire. And we talked about, um, boy, I can't remember, The Unexpected Task. That's what it was called. Where oh, cool. Harry, cool. Where Harry has to ask someone to the Yule Ball. So that was really, really fun to be on that show with them. That episode comes out the first week of December. So probably like a week after this comes out, actually. So stay tuned for that. That should be really fun. Awesome. Um, really fun. Yeah, it was awesome. It was just more of like a like a book club discussion, which I mean, we talk about books here, but we don't necessarily go that in depth into one particular chapter. So I had a, no. a lot of fun and uh, I hope you guys have a lot of fun listening to it. So if you haven't checked out Aloha Mora, um, go do that. It's a great show. So yay, Harry Potter podcast. We love supporting other Harry Potter podcasts. We do. I can't wait to listen to it. I love listening to Aloha Mora and like their I love the chapter revisits, especially because I like that they don't necessarily go in order. So I'm always surprised at what's going to come up. Um, Do we have any other news? I don't think so. I think that that's why it was tiny. That's why it was tiny. Yeah, not a lot of news. So I think we should uh, move on to our tiny main segment of this episode. (laughs) All 
Okay, so for the tiny main segment of this show, we are going to talk about a tiny book, or shall we say books, plural, because uh, Melanie and I are going to talk about something that we briefly touched on when we did that episode about books that come in two parts, which is a great episode. Well, it's actually books that come in multiple parts. Um, right. But this book comes in two parts, and it is the, I, I don't even know what we call it, the Tiny Pocket Edition Japanese book yeah. one, soft cover, I, two parts. <laughs> I feel like it's hard to, like, differentiate this one because there's so many different Japanese books. Um, there are these ones. I feel like there are, like, it, I guess there would be anniversary editions that are also this size. Um, and then there's the ones that are like slightly bigger than these, which are like, I always call those like the sketchy editions because they kind of look yeah. like they were sketched. Looks like pencil sketch art. Yeah. 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 So there, there are just so many, there are so many Japanese books, but, um, these were the first little witty bitty ones that came out. Yeah. And they are like itsy bitsy teeny weeny they are so small they are so small that in fact before we recorded um i actually put one in each of my back jean pockets and turned around and showed melanie that they do in fact fit in my jean pocket i I think they're smaller than like the iphone pro like the plus or the pro like the here's my phone is a 12 pro max um height wise it is smaller than my phone width wise almost like it is almost she is she is whittle it's a whittle book so that's why it's a teeny tiny episode um i think that these are the tiniest books on my shelves um yes i agree for book one and what i think is crazy about that this is like one of my favorite fun facts this is the smallest book on my shelf for sorcerer's stone but the Japanese hardcover book one, Sorcerer's Stone, is the book that has the most pages for Sorcerer's Stone. So out of all of the translations, Japanese has the most pages, but then it also has the tiniest edition. Like, I just think that that's just such a cool little fun fact. It definitely is. And we should mention that all of the Japanese Harry Potter translations, including these teeny ones that we're going to talk about, um, they open like a like a manga would so they open you read right to left so they open the opposite of of what you would expect an english book to open and they read top to bottom right to left so and japanese has lots of different alphabets and lots of different or not alphabets lots of different scripts that they can use um yeah and alphabets here got a katakana they got the whole bunch uh, but this one does vertical right to left and not only is that exciting but like melanie said the bigger the books get in Japanese, the more volumes they need because it takes up so many pages. So book one of Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone in hardcover has the most pages of any translation of book one in any language. But by the time you get to like book three, four, five, like they need, they needed multiple volumes just because you could not print a book that thick and have it in one volume. And that was something that was kind of new to me before I started doing translation collecting were these books that came in multiple volumes. So that was super cool. And I found it particularly interesting that even these like itty bitty teeny books still come in two parts, like unnecessarily two parts. Um, And for me, the reason that, I mean, the reason that they do this is so that you can put it in your pocket, put it in your backpack, put it in your purse, put it in your work bag and read it on the go. It's an on the go reading copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Um, I will mention that not only is it in two parts, the col- the cover art and the color of the color. Baba, boy, that was hard to say. <laughs> the cover art and the color of the cover art is different in both volumes. So they're really easy mm-hmm. to differentiate between the two. On the spines, they have a one on part one. They have a two on part two. Um, even on the front cover, even if you don't speak Japanese, it says like 1-1 and the other one says 1-2. So you know which one comes first and which one comes second. Um, but ironically, you do not purchase these books together. You purchase them separately. So if you go on Amazon Japan or you go on Amazon US, you can easily find these books. They're not hard and they're not expensive, um, which we'll talk about momentarily. 
but you do have to make sure that if you want the full book that you buy both of them. I made that mistake the first time. Um, I think this was the first book that I purchased that came in two parts, and I bought just the blue one, which is part two. And on the Amazon listing, I didn't read it thoroughly enough. I probably should have done a little bit more digging, but again, um, I can't remember if I got this before or after Korean, because Korean was also my first. Maybe that was my first. Book Korean in two parts. was my first. That was you know, in two right. parts. I Korean had a friend was my that first picked it up for parts. me and only got me one part. So yes, same here. I needed yep, to track and then down I had, the other part. Yep, and then I had mm-hmm. someone else go to Korea and actually get me the second one from Korea too. So both yep. of them came from Korea, but from different people. Um, but this was the first one that I purchased, and it was confusing. I was under the impression that when I saw like a one dash two that it was gonna it was like book one two parts that was the listing but no it was book one part two so if you want both go for the picture you have to look at the picture that really helps um so i guess a little bit of background on japanese just in general we've talked about it before um but japanese has a lot of speakers 128 million l1 speakers and all of them pretty much live in japan <laughs> I mean, there's some that yeah. live elsewhere, but Japan is the only country where Japanese is the official language. So the most Japanese speakers um, that speak Japanese live in Japan. It's the same translator. It's Yuko Matsuoka, and the publisher, it's the same. It is Seizan Sha Publications Limited. And as far as I know, and I don't read Japanese, but I know that some of our listeners do, I think this is the exact same text block that's in the other ones. I mm-hmm. don't know of any major changes that they made or any major errors that they fixed. Right. Um, but that's really, really it on the background of the book. We could talk about the rarity. I don't think it's rare. Not rare. I think you can no. still get them. Um, and value, they're not that expensive. Um, shipping, again, is going to be a, no. an issue, necess- but not I, like a deal breaker. I think you I still- can get the box set. Yeah, like they, that's you, what I was you can get say. the box set on Amazon Japan. Like they have the complete box set. It's not super expensive. I think it's only like a hundred comes out to like a hundred dollars for it. It's one of those that like I've had in my cart for a million years and just yeah. haven't like been able to just do it and yeah. <laughs> actually buy and it. But so um what, what I was gonna say about shipping cool it's not bad if you combine things, especially from like Amazon mm-hmm. Japan. So if you order multiple things at once, your shipping's not gonna be quite as as high so if you're going to buy these make sure you're buying them at the same time don't buy one and then buy another one a month later or don't buy book one now and be like oh i think i want book two buy that a month later that's that's where the shipping cost is really going to start adding up so like if you're going to get them like get them all together get them at in one go just do it so like melanie said they do offer this in a box set uh the books are exactly the same it just comes in a nice little box and that way you'll only be paying the shipping once if you want all of the volumes i don't need them all i only have book one um and i bought them again separately because i made a whoopsie doopsie um and (laughs) had to do two separate purchases but after getting one of them i realized that these are cool gifts to give so when i bought my second copy i actually bought a second version of it and used that to um send to someone else that helped me find a book that i was looking for um so it's kind of like thanks for helping me find the book i'm going to send this to you as a little bonus uh, for what we're doing the trade for. And she was very appreciative of that. That was really cool. It's such a fun book to have. Um, I mean, we could talk about what's so great about it in our little reading scale. So typically we only do one book, but I feel like we have to do both volumes together, right? That's like, do you want to, do you want to sniff part two and I could sniff part one or vice yeah, versa? I mean, like I'm I've, sure I've, I just the smelled them both. They smell the same. They're the same. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure that they smell the same. Um, they smell the same. They're the same book. They feel exactly the same, too. Everything about them is the same. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to give this, for how it smells, I'm going to give it an acceptable. I feel like it's nothing crazy. There's nothing nothing too smelly about it. It definitely has, like, a smell to it, but it's, it's you know. Oh, mine ha- Oh. No, we'll talk about that. That might be my X factor. Not gonna say it. Not gonna say it. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Amazing. I found it too. Um, uh-huh. I agree. Um, I agree with acceptable. Right. It's it's fine. Yeah, you know, it doesn't smell like a lot. Nothing crazy. Or a little. It's but that's fine. Acceptable right. is a good score for smell. I think I always say. I always yeah. say that smell is acceptable. It's good to smell acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now here's where we start to you know this is where the book is gonna really wow you. Um. Size and proportions. I mean, this is an outstanding. There is no other book like this. I mean, except for those little, the anniversary versions, which like, but this was the first one to do it. The first one to be this little. I mean, this, look how cute. They're so little. I can like, fit perfect. all of my fingers around the outside of this book. Like if I hold it and show Exa- you the cover. It's amazing. I mean, I I can too. Like you hold the whole thing open and it's just like. Boop, here's a book. Let me just like, read it. La, la, right la. now, my like, my my perfect. thumb, middle finger, and ring finger. My thumb's on the bottom. My middle finger, ring finger, on the top. My pointer finger is on the spine, and my pinky is on the edge, side edge. Like I can hold the whole book. Like, haha. Yeah. If it was a basketball, I could dunk this thing right through the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take that. Take that book. Um. Yeah. Size and proportions are an outstanding. I agree. It's an outstanding. Period. It's so it's so um, cool. And not, not only is it outstanding because it's small, like the actual size and proportions are are. It's like you took a good size book and just shrunk it down. It doesn't feel too perfect. long or too wide, right? It's just a perfect size book, but it's no. just smaller. Oh my gosh, no! It's it's just absolutely perfect. Um, perfect size and proportions. Um, that being said, also how it feels in your hands. I'm also gonna give it an outstanding. But the fact that I could just like throw this book around um if I was able to read it that I could just like hold it open in one hand it's so easy um I love how like floppy it is like I always say when it comes to like a paperback I love one where you could like kind of tuck the cover behind and hold it in one hand like this yeah and this is definitely one that you could do that and read that read this book that way um so yeah how it feels in your hands is absolutely outstanding. I agree with the outstanding for that. And I will add for all of the same reasons when you can fold the page behind and read it, that's what you're supposed to do with these books. You're supposed to be able to read them one handed holding mm-hmm. onto a pole on the train, right? So you don't tip over or waiting for a bus or I don't know what else you're doing with your other hand bird watching. Who knows? I don't know. You can do that with one <laughs> eye and read with the other. Um, but yeah, you, never, you, can, you know, you, you can absolutely hold and read this book with one hand, which is really cool. Outstanding. Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, Quality of the book, I mean, for what it is, I would give the quality, I dare I say, also I would give it, I think, an outstanding. I I just, I feel like for what it is, the quality is great. Um, The fact that you could fold the cover behind and the spine isn't really going to crease. It's just not meant to do that. It's it's meant to be read yeah. um, because it's so tiny. I feel like the, you know, the paper is just as thick as it needs to be. The the cover is, is just as thick as it needs to be. Oh, oh that's that might be my X factor. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to decide. It's it's so good. This book is just fantastic. Um, Yeah, uh, quality, I'm going to give it an outstanding. I'm also giving it an outstanding because it it's just, it's got a dust jacket. And then it has like a cover, even though the cover is just like stiffer paper. It's, it's just, but it's, it's got, it's there's got all nothing the parts. wrong with it. No, it's got all the parts of a book. It's just tiny. And in terms of like a soft cover book, even if you compare it to like a regular sized soft cover book this book isn't gonna fall apart it just feels so sturdy and it's, no it's great it's it's just it's so great it's so it's so great the quality of the the cover of the dust jacket it's slippery but it feels really like sturdy yet still sturdy. yet mm-hmm. still pliable and like you can bend it and that's okay i i don't know how to explain it it's just it's just a great book it's it's awesome. It's just such a great book. Um, all right. Cover art and interpretation of the cover art. Here's the thing. Uh, this might be where it's like kind of lacking. I would give the cover art probably just an acceptable 
it is unique cover art. This is the only place where you're going to see this cover art is on these books like this. But if you if it didn't say Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Harry Potter all over it, you'd have no way of knowing that these are Harry Potter books. Like it it's a chess piece. That's that's it. It's a chess piece and on part 1 it's in red and part 2 it's in blue and it's zoomed in more and it's just a chess piece. Like, yeah, uh, I'm actually. So I'm I'm going just maybe poor. I think uh, I might even go poor. I'm going poor. I was I was all in on poor. It's a stock image. It's yeah. It's not not no creativity was used necessarily to come up with this. Yeah. And especially when I compare it to the like sketch cover Japanese books that are of this size, just a little bit bigger. Literally like, any other Japanese yeah. cover other than these ones. Yeah, I I would say like, like this. All of the, the other Japanese of, books are all beautiful. the Japanese books. These have the worst cover art. That's not to say it's bad, um, but again, I don't think you would be buying these for the cover art. You're buying these to read on the go. Correct. So it doesn't doesn't really even matter what's on the cover honestly because you're throwing it in your bag you're, you're not like looking at the cover yeah on the train maybe you are i would be because i can't read japanese i don't know what other <laughs> parts of the book I'd reading be like he's been reading the cover for the last eight minutes well yep <laughs> so yeah i'm, I'm going you know? poor for cover art on on both i i guess yeah eh, all right that's okay i there the book has so many other things going for it it's okay it can yeah, be laughing when I it agree. comes to the the cover right i think that's fine um x factor there's like a few things i mean besides the size i feel like the size itself could be an x factor uh i mean eric just showed me this little illustration of this little owl on the back cover and i'm kind of vibing with that it's so cute it looks like a ball of yarn with an owl head looks like a tattoo that you'd want to get like on your foot Right? Wait, should I do that? I love him. Maybe. I just love him. He's so cute. What a cute little owl. Aww. Do you have any other um, X and factors? He too? is on both volumes. He is I on mean, both. I mean, that and also, yeah, he is on both. Yep. Um, My other X factor that I was saying, mine came with like all of these like little inserts. Um. And I'm pretty sure yours did also. So yeah, I, I just love like when there's anything like a little bit extra. So when I got them, mine had like these inserts for Pottermore, which I feel like is like kind of nostalgic now. Yeah, that's like, cool. This is like an advertisement for Pottermore on the back. Um, and I, I can probably send you one, Eric, because this uh, this one came with like, I think there's like four of them. There's, I have oh, one, wow. Two. Yeah. Well, and if yeah, you want one. me to send you one of the inserts I got, because my insert is the advertisement for the Japanese house editions. And there's this. Oh, so cool. There's this Japanese woman in a kimono holding up a wand and a little um, niffler next to the pictures of the four house editions, which are super cool. Oh, I love that. It's super cool. And then underneath is just the typical, like. Like other, the little. The little like book band, right? Book band, yeah. Yeah, I I just love all of the little like nicks and crannies that you find. Like this one, I have like a little bookmark that came in mine. Yeah, and, um, has the little, and yeah, these little Pottermore chapter, advertisements has a little cha- uh, table of contents chapter guide on the bookmark. So each of the yeah. ones are different. Like look how look how cool this is. That's so cool. And, I and have I have an extra one, so I can. I, can I never throw any of that away. Some people throw those away. I don't because to me never. they're part of, they're part of the the book experience. I think well, so cool. you know, I feel like um, I, I I always did keep them. But after having our conversation with Arun, when we did the episode on the Yiddish translation, you kind of realize like how much thought goes into the insert sometimes. Um, so I feel like that kind of like just lends me to have all the more reason why I have to make sure I keep them. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, I think the the inserts are probably my X factor. That would be mine too. Just all the all the frills that come with these books. Um, like I just discovered that there was a teeny bookmark in them right now. I hadn't even noticed that because of all mm-hmm. the other things that come with these books that I'd already been paying attention to. So yeah, it was right in the middle, like squished way on the inside, this tiny little Harry Potter know, bookmark. I love it's it. so cool. Um yeah, I just think that's awesome. And that little owl. The little owl's on the spine too. The tippy top. I oh 
Just yeah. look at him. Oh, he's so cute. And he's on the back <sighs> cover. What a great in book. red. Little teeny guy. He's like the mascot, the book he mascot. Is. He's like the book mascot. Maybe he is. Oh. I bet he actually just is the book mascot. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he is. Um, just awesome book. Every, everything that you would want in a beautiful Harry Potter translation in one teeny tiny package. Two. Two Perfect. teeny tiny packages. Well, yeah. You know. But even just the two of them combined are still just so teeny I know. Tiny. They're so small. <laughs> They're so small. Um, So that's going to be it for our teeny tiny episode today. Um, You know, holidays and everything like that. We're going to get... Into our schedule, technically this is kind of like, we'll. it's not like you guys are getting like an extra episode, but we're going to do an episode next week too. So you, when, you know, it's like, it's a good thing. Um, so for today, that's all that we have time for. Um, but there are a plethora of ways that you can get in touch with us. You can message all of us on Instagram, Eric at Nocturne Eric. You can find me at the Harry Potter Collection or Carly at All the Pretty Books. Um, we also have a bunch of websites, alltheprettybooks.net, theharrypottercollection.com, and dialoguealley.com. We have a Twitter. We have a Facebook. I'm on TikTok. Um, and one of the coolest places that you can find us is on MuggleNet. So you can find our podcast on there as well as Alohomora and other Harry Potter podcasts. Um that's where you can listen to any of our episodes, but you could listen to Eric's new episode of that he's going to be on for Aloha Mora, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and and if you like what you are listening to, you can always get a little bit more by supporting us on Patreon. That is patreon.com slash Dialogue Alley. You can get access to our Discord um, where the conversation literally never, ever stops ever. Everyone's always chatting about all of these Harry Potter books. Everyone's super passionate, super helpful. And it's a great resource if this is something that you think is cool and you want to get into. Um, we also have bonus content, ad-free episodes doing that. So all sorts of good stuff. Um, but for our teeny tiny episode today, that is all that we have time for. So it's time to walk back through the archway and into your daily lives. And we will catch you next time. Bye. See ya. Bye.